this meeting to order. This is the Wednesday, October 19th meeting of the Concord City Planning Board. I'm sorry. I should have waited for you it's because okay. I'm going to have you call the roll. I'm ready to do the roll. Chairman right. Whitman? Here. Councillor Champlin? Here. Member Rosenberger? Here. Member Hicks? Here. Member Savage? Here. Member Santa Cruz? Here. Member Fox? Here. Okay. Uh, a, a mighty quorum tonight. Everyone's here, almost everyone. Uh, Let's uh, take item first on the agenda here is approval of the September 21st minutes. Would someone like to make a motion to approve those minutes as submitted? So moved. Second. Motions been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I recuse myself because I was not present. Oh, thank you very much. For the record, Byron Champlin's recused himself from uh, the minute vote. Uh, we've got one item on the agenda that's going to be pulled off tonight at the request of the applicant. Uh, that's item 8G, which is the break-a-day uh, development, uh, casino development up on, uh, up on the Heights. Uh, that has been requested by the applicant to postpone to the November 16th meeting, so we will not be hearing any testimony. If you're here for that item, it uh, won't be addressed tonight. Uh, and with that, everything else will be heard. We'll move right into our determination completeness component. We've got just one item on the, on the DOC, is that right, Heather? Correct. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is uh, 10 Whitney Road. Um, it's a determination of completeness. Anybody in the audience have any questions or concerns about that application? If not, uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve that on consent with architectural design review recommendations? So moved. Motion's been made by Councillor Pierce. I'm recusing myself from consent, please. Okay. Uh, I think it was Councillor Champlin who made the motion. Councillor Champlin. What, what did I say? What did I say? What they call it? Councillor Pierce. Pierce. Oh. Yeah. Watch Cousin. the tape. Oh, first time. First time. Do we have a second? Second. second. Motion uh, seconded by David Fox. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, and Teresa was recused, correct? Yep. Uh, Teresa recused. <coughs> um, and the design review by consent is item 6A through 6F. Um, uh, consent review items on the agenda, if anyone's here for 6A, B, C, D, E, or F, are reviewed prior to the meeting. Uh, we have a couple that'll be pulled off of consent uh, and heard separately. If any member of the audience has any concerns about these, or you could make yourself known. If not, uh, D and E. We'll pull D and E from consent. So we're gonna, he we're gonna, uh, address items A, B, C, and F by consent. Would someone like to make a motion to approve those items uh, with architectural design review recommendations? I'm recusing again. Okay. I'm uh, doing a lot of recusing That's fine. Tonight. No, no problem. All right. Uh, so for the record, Teresa's recused from, uh, from item six. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the items as outlined? So moved. Motion made by David Fox, seconded by? Second. Uh, Matt Hicks, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries, so we'll hear item 8D. Uh, if we could read that into the record, Heather. Item 8D is... Sorry, 60. Oh, 60. 60. Yeah, that's what I thought. Councilor Pierce told me to do that. PRM <laughs> Holdings request ADR approval for installation of a 15-square-foot non-illuminated window sign and 3-square-foot non-illuminated wall sign at 41 North Main Street in the Central Business Performance District. Okay, uh, Jeff, questions? Yeah, first of all, I think the size of the sign is shown incorrectly if the sign includes the entire blue panel all the way across because there's actually three 74-inch panels. So if you take the three times the 74 times the 29, it's bigger than the 15 square feet in the application. Yes. So uh, the most of the, the only thing that is considered the actual sign for the code interpretation is the actual breeze line, the little tiny writing on the far right. Uh, the rest of it is considered aesthetic as it's not advertising anything. It's just... Do we get to talk about that aesthetic piece then or not really? It's yeah, Sure, the absolutely. Sure. Not really thrilled with it. I don't see the point yep. of it. Yep. Um, so the it it kind of seems chance. weird that the breeze line is all the way over to the right. If anything, maybe if breeze line was in the middle and the other two panels were on the other side, maybe it made a little more sense. It does make sense. That does. Putting it in the middle, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's no. I don't know what the reasoning would be. I mean, I can guess what the icons mean. Uh, you know, with the Wi-Fi icon and the heart and the cloud, and I don't know what the other one is. But um, 
yeah, I mean, if, if you'd like to make a motion to approve it with the, with the sign adjustments, there was no architectural design review questions on this, Heather? Uh, no. Yes. I, I think there were. There, well, so let me just clarify. I apologize. They, no, it's okay. They, they, there were others who were not a fan of the um, scale of the aesthetic elements in relation to the breeze line writing. They thought the breeze line should be bigger and the other stuff should be smaller. Um, but that was kind of a recommendation. Did you, did you remember something additional? No, that was it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to get some more information before we recommend changing it in case there's a reason why those are leading into the breeze line. Um, and again, the, the idea that it is pretty small, I mean, it's 74 inches, it's probably what, 60 inches across, seeing it from the other side of Main Street. Amanda? So, uh, thank you. Um, I, I agree with Jeff and that the other two panels, I know that they're not quote unquote the sign, but it, it's still a visible um, panel yeah. that that is introduced during the signage. Um, so so I'm, I'm also in so agreement that for me, I'd rather it just be the fade of the blue and, and none of the, the red and the little icon things. Yeah. But that's just m me as a. So that, I mean, that was going to be my point is if you moved the breeze line into the middle, then the, then the, then the, the, gra the gradients are off um, as it moves from a darker blue to a light blue to white at the end. So they if they can change too. the gradients and move it, um, do you want them to, to come in and address it, or do we want to approve it with the condition that we move the breeze line into the middle? I, I'm, I'm indifferent. I, I I, I'm kind of of the idea. It's I think it'd be worth hearing what they have to say. If this is some sort of company branding that's everywhere, then maybe there's a little more flexibility because right. obviously other places we've looked at that. But other places we always seem to kind of say, gee, the sign should be centered here over the doorway or in the yep. window panel, and suddenly – we're not doing that. Yep. Um, and the other symbols seem to kind of overpower the breeze line. Yep. We have a motion to table. Uh, we can have motion to table, or we, uh, we could do that. Yeah, motion to table, and then they can uh, come in next month and, uh, and address it. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. So made by Councilor Champlin, seconded <laughs> by Jeff Santa Cruz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries, so that item is tabled, and then let's read item 6E, uh, yes, E, into the agenda. Aaron Ocean Oil, doing business as Aranko, requests ADR approval for installation of an 18-square-foot non-illuminated canopy sign, an 18-square-foot internally illuminated canopy sign, and replacement of a 189-square-foot internally illuminated panel on an existing freestanding sign at 15 Manchester Street in the General Commercial District. Okay, Jeff, questions on that? Yeah, if you look at the before, I just want to clarify and make sure that the applicant understands there's, if you look at the before picture, there's actually two smaller panels at the bottom on the post that reference pricing, which is part of the sign. I just want to be clear that those do have to come off when, the new, when those panels get switched around in order, because all they're basically doing is switching the order of, for the panels for the most, and changing the color out. I just want to make sure that those smaller red and white price panels are removed as shown in the after picture, and that is, we clarify that. My, I, I think that's correct, because the size of the sign, um, the, the final condition has the three panels, and they're the same. So they, they moved the, the one on the top, the quick stop on the bottom. Right. They moved the one on the bottom, the price is to the middle, and they moved the one in the middle. To the top and it so, is a grandfathered size so i just want to make yeah. sure they're clear that those two have to come off when they do all these changes well, i know it shows yeah. it in the after but they're being moved up no 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 there's so if the you two look little, at the, the up before picture see the two oh, little two small little, the oh, little add -ons i just want to make it clear in yeah. that that those are definitely coming off and staying off that they're not going to pop back on there after all the panels move around i have no idea if that is something that um is okay or not okay per the code so I will follow up with so the code maybe a, maybe an yeah, approval yeah. recommendation. I just want to make sure because it looks like part addresses. of the sign because yeah. it's still showing pricing. So yeah. how about a, a recommendation to approve with architectural design comments and a note to code enforcement code to ensure that uh, that if they are allowed after the fact that code has addressed it. So would you like to make that motion? I, so that motion sounds so made. So okay. eloquently put. So we've so got a we've got a motion uh, by Jeff. Sorry. Oh, 
Go, go ahead, you're good. Motion by Jeff uh, to approve uh, with architectural design review recommendations and a note to code regarding the two signs that are underneath the main sign uh, and a second by uh, David Fox. All those are any discussion, further discussion? No recusals? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. That moves us can through. I, sorry, yes. can I interrupt one second, yep. Rich? Um, we forgot to do a determination of regional impact for item 5A. Can we go back and do we that? We certainly can. For so the Morrill Mill Pond application. How did we miss that? I think we just said it was determined complete and did not include the entire statement that also as part of the motion determine a development of regional input. <sighs> My yeah. goodness. So let's so it is Ross Ross that that. Somebody, <laughs> yeah, somebody, Council <laughs> Pierce did it, I think. So yeah. uh, I think that's what item 5A uh, will go back and there is a determination of completeness component. It's in there. It is a regional impact, development of regional impact uh, and set the planning board hearing for November 16th. Would someone like to make a motion to find that application complete a oh. development of regional so impact? So moved. Second. The motion has been made by Councillor Pierce, seconded by Jeff. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. That motion carries. That thought said aye. Thank you very much, Beth. Um, and that moves us to the public hearing section of our agenda tonight. So item 7A, if we could read that into the record. Uh, 7A is design review application. Uh, Scott Thomas, on behalf of CP Concord LLC, requests ADR approval for facade changes and a new 60 square foot internally illuminated wall sign at 310 Loudon Road in the Gateway Performance District. Um, would you like me to give us a summary? If you, yeah, if so you would. This came for a uh, ADR for sign review last month. It was a freestanding sign and a wall sign. Um, they, uh, the board approved the freestanding sign but not the wall sign because it was shown on a facade that was different from the existing condition. Mm -hmm. uh, and we noted that they actually needed a, another approval for the facade changes. Um, so there was some confusion about what was going on there. So and subsequently, the applicant did submit the um, application for the building permit in the, um, in the performance district. And in your packet is showing the changes from the existing to the proposed condition. Um, and, I, and I can help answer some questions. I don't know if the applicant's here, but I had to stare at it for quite some time to understand what was going on. So if you do have questions, I'm happy so to help. So just <laughs> for the record, if you look at the sign application, yeah, come on up if you could. So um, if you look at the sign application, it shows the prior version that we had questions on. If you look at the building permit application, uh, screen three, I think, shows you the elevations with the uh, the um, with the correct draw, the correct elevations. So if I'm understanding yep. this correctly, so the sign application is going to have to be revised. No, the sign application is fine. It's just uh, a photo. It it just wasn't clear to the board before. Right, but the sign application facade and the, the building permit facade do not match. They should. They don't. Yeah, they What's don't. different? They don't. This different. The crenellation at the top. I'm sorry. The kind of the jog line oh, at okay. the top does I'm not. I'm going match. to assume that the building permit, the sign, and the building permit. We we can get some clarification. Yep. Yeah, um, my name is Thomas Scott. I'm here representing the. Um, the applicant, my, my firm is Scott Griffin Architects, and um, I brought uh, this picture. This is what's being built today. Um, so, there's no changes to the elevations as far as the as far as the facade goes. No, or is kept, that you're adding this that cornice yeah. element the same? I think there was a previous design that showed it kind of stepped up and down, and we're, right. we're not doing that. Okay. Because that's what's still in the sign application. Right. That what, was what's causing me right. yeah. confusion. Yeah. So maybe a review to just make sure that the sign application images match the existing building application images and then everything lines up right. Okay. Yeah. So we can make those changes, I think, internally probably, but if, in case it's different. Can I ask a question? Heather will I tell us what I said wrong. Yes. No, I okay. still have a question. Sure. So on the building, mm -hmm. across the top, is that sort of cornice treatment, right? Yeah. That's on the ex existing build, well, hold on. Ex and so on the existing building, mm -hmm. on the little the set back piece, mm -hmm. there's no cornice on the top in the, on the existing building. Are, but in the picture, I can't see. Mm -hmm. have you, you have it. Do you, is that, how are you doing it? Are you adding we cornice are. on the top? Okay. Yeah, so this is existing across the entire top okay. here. And then you're just and adding And then we're it, adding this piece here. Okay. I gotcha. That okay. was something that confused me so greatly because then mm -hmm. you have that additional it's in its elevation, but that additional piece on the bottom is in the way it's back. Way of the back, <laughs> right? This piece right here is yeah. the loading dock. Right, exactly. Back. 
Just, so then there's some what, some some EFIS, some EFIS material or something that makes up that the different front face. Yeah. Okay. The site plan shows the um, the um, loading dock way back here. That piece that you see yeah. in the other elevation. Yes. So one of the questions that ADR had was mm -hmm. they thought that you were um, covering the facade with an additional material. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're doing? We are um, because we're trying to create some distinction for the new tenants. Okay. Because so the building was, was designed as a, a single tenant originally. Right. So, um, yeah. and we've got two new tenants. It's, yeah. it's a multi-tenant building now, so. Um, so when they were, what they were unclear about was looking at the profile from the side, they weren't, they were like, it must stick out, but we can't tell what's going mm -hmm. on there. You know, so that was a question that they had about. Yeah. What's, There'll be a what slight it, a change in um, plane here yeah. of two inches. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they were, that was, that's yeah, what that ADR was, was concerned that the about. Notes, yeah. that, and they were asking to have the words yeah. centered in the facade. I actually like it over the doors like that. Yeah, we have it centered over the doors. I like it too. Right. Well, the right-hand side of the building is actually the other business. Right, but that whole yeah, main facade piece No, no, is the, the right-hand side of that facade piece. Yeah, yeah. see the, the, uh, the yeah. tenant, that's, that, that's this different. tenant actually extends to this point. Oh, I missed that in yeah. there, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's very so confusing. So we've got yeah. it that's probably why it's centered over there. Right, kind of like Harbor right. Freight's over their door, so it kind of yeah. matches that same exactly. style. Mm -hmm. Okay, that clarifies a lot for me. Okay. That's uh, that's good. And I don't think we need to do anything regarding the just the way the applications are, are presented in the packet no. isn't isn't material, right? No. ADR did recommend that it be tabled because they wanted to see it again, but I I don't see I don't any think he's answered the questions yeah, no, that they I'm, had. I'm fine with not with with the presentation. Although I think Babies R Us would take umbrage to, to having them called a single <laughs> a single storefront, but <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. Yeah. And, you know, all of these windows, yeah, no. these are all brand new. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're poking lots of yeah. holes in the building yeah. to get some natural light and uh, some visibility into the space. That looks good. It's a nicer looking building. It's a much, much yeah. nicer it looking is. building. It is. Yeah. Now if we could just get the trees planted again. The trees planted. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't uh, So this is just discussion regarding the sign, right? There's no, Correct. There's no application or anything other than that. Okay, thank you very much for your testimony. Okay. We're all set. Any do questions? I have to sign in or anything? You do, if you could. Okay. Thank you. Any questions about this application from the audience? No? So we'll close the public hearing. I opened it. Did you hear me open it? That was awesome. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve this application as submitted with architectural design review comments, but not the recommendation at table? Um, and I don't think we need to address the sign picture, right? I don't know if I you want to say can. ADR poo because didn't they want it centered? Well, I know. Yeah, you're right. It is centered yeah. over the storefront. It's centered over right, the storefront. Right, but I think front. they said, yeah, well, the way they word it made it sound so like that let's, whole. Let's reword you, that. I would just, I'd just I say, would just do our own. I would without suggest ADR, approve yeah. this submitted yeah. during the public hearing. So, would someone like to make a motion to approve this as submitted and discussed tonight at the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion's made by Jeff, seconded by Matt. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much for your testimony. Okay. And okay. you've got off scot-free. You're ready to go now. You <laughs> missed the whole fun of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay. That moves us on to item uh, section 8 in our agenda, site plan subdivisions and conditional use permit applications. If we could read item 8A into the agenda, into the record. T.F. Bernier, on behalf of Blackwater Loop LLC, requests a conditional use permit for disturbance of a wetland buffer and steep slopes at 128 Horse Hill Road in the open space residential district. Staff recommends the application be determined complete, not a development of regional impact, and to open the public hearing. Okay, so we've got a determination of completeness component to this application, not a development of regional impact. Would someone like to make a motion to find the application complete and open the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilor Champlin, seconded by David Fox. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Public hearing is open. Welcome to the table. If you guys could state your names for the record. Angela Raymond, I'm the owner. Uh, Tim Bernier, TF Bernier Incorporated. Welcome, uh, welcome back, Mr. Bernier. If you could tell us about this project. Sure. Um, the Raymonds uh, last year purchased uh, a piece of property of 46 acres on um, 
its current address is 128 Horse Hill Road. Also has front edge on um, Blackwater Road. Um, the, the lot is 46 okay. acres. It's in the RO district. They purchased it because they found a site up on the property that had uh, beautiful views, south-facing views that they wanted to build their, their dream house uh, at. Um, and uh, so I've been pursuing that ever since. Um, and uh, one of the things that they need uh, when I looked at it for the septic system design was they could avoid wetlands to get to the proposed house site, but they, they couldn't avoid the buffers. So we, we slipped the driveway in between two wetlands, um, but still because of the fill extensions and, and other criteria, um, we did impact the, the wetland buffer slightly. Um, and uh, uh, and in addition to uh, requesting a conditional use permit for the wetland bar for the driveways is over a thousand feet in length to get to the house site. So we were at requesting a waiver of the subdivision regulations because the, uh, this parcel, although it's 46 acres, was part of a sub recent subdivision where they subdivided two frontage lots um, off the property. So uh, that makes that subdivision regulation apply to this lot, if that makes sense. So. Um, so there's two aspects to this, uh, the condition use permit to, to get through that wetland, um, the wetland buffer uh, only, and the length of the driveway. Um, so this, this driveway, uh, the, the key element with the, the thousand foot rules fire that, that comes from the fire department, um, and the Raymonds have been in, in touch with the fire department. They were going back and forth today and, and previously about exactly what the fire department requires. Um, we did settle that that the way it was designed is correct. It's 20 foot wide driveway, um, and that meets the standard. I did remove that there was a 16 foot label on there. Um, it's kind of uh, uh, left over from our previous um, assessment, so I just took that off. So the width of the driveway is 20 feet, which is which is required. So there was a couple of um, notes that were requested by uh, planning staff. I have added those to the plans, um, mostly just uh, environmental, remove the remove the erosion control measures after it's stabilized, those kinds of things, um, and the seating mix. Um, so that's that's uh, um, the purpose of the application and the, and the um, proposal. Uh, engineering had a couple of comments. Um, I'd like to work through those with, with engineering. Um, my ones regarding the driveway culvert, I think I did the, I think I, I did the best job I could to, to address all the issues um, for Blackwater Road primarily. Um, so I will kind of go over that and if there's a, if you can come up with a better solution, I'm all, all ears. So, um, and we'll go over that uh, station three plus zero zero. So, um, and also a uh, requirement of planning staff, which I believe is to, um, mark all the buffers. There's 2.1 on the staff review comments, uh, mark all the buffers, uh, in the field where disturbance is, I believe it's supposed to be likely, not unlikely, right? Yes, thank you for that. Yep. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Yes, we're I, in the vicinity of construction. Yep. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Um, it's 46 acres. We could have been marking stuff all over. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere but construction site, Mark. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Um, I'd be happy to go through the criteria for the condition use permit if the, if the board would like, um, or I'd be happy to answer questions if, if, the, if the board's reviewed. So I, I saw a note on uh, one of the uh, narratives about the excessive slope. So what's the slope front to top to bottom? Oh, what's boy, the elevation I, change? I just did this 132 feet different from the house location to Blackwater Road and 148 from the house location to um, Horse Hill Road. The slope is, is out front so one of the, there isn't really any lots that could be subdivided, although there's a, like a thousand feet of frontage on Blackwater Road. It's very steep at the beginning. So really to build off Blackwater Road, you have to get past that um, to get to the building site anyway. So you're already, you're gonna be a thousand, at least a thousand feet just to get past the, the steep slopes along Blackbrook Road. Um, but those slopes also is what create the view. And what, Beth, can you give us some, an idea on the buffer incursion as far as I, I don't see it on the I didn't see it on the notes I might have skipped over it but I, did you, you were just going to point to it what's that I'm sorry he's asking where is the location of the buffer the wetland, the wetland buffer that's being impacted you bring it's on the plan the sheet one use. plan sheet one yes yeah, sheet one, one. yeah right here where the big yeah. cross culvert is 
got you. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So there's, because we're, we're slipping between the two wetlands, um, we have a wetland buffer on one side and a wetland buffer on the other, the driveway in the middle, we're, we're not in the buffer. Um, so there's 435 feet on one side and 1,330 feet on the other side of wetlands uh, buffer impact. Part of that is also the um, uh, erosion control, uh, the permanent erosion control features of stone to keep the culvert from eroding the, the bank. Um, that's, that's in the buffer. But, um, and you know, on that plan, if you look at that plan in the upper left-hand corner, it shows the whole 46-acre lot, which is, is the best. It kind of shows how we, we ran that driveway. Uh, for fire codes also, we have, well, in Concord, we have the maximum grade of a driveway of 10%. So um, the driveway has a little bit of a, a loop there to, to keep that slope at 10%. We're 9.99. <laughs> no construction <laughs> tolerance there. Um, yeah, that's why we, uh, we survey it. <laughs> okay. Uh, comments from the board? Yes, Jeff? So I have a couple. I went up and actually walked some of the site the other day. <laughs> and the area that's been cleared, when you come off the site, it splits left. And you can see where the skitter and whatnot went up right. I'm a little concerned you've already gotten into a wetland buffer on that side of the site. I couldn't see specific flags and what colors. There were no writing on any flags to know. Okay. But I would just be concerned that maybe that's checked to make sure that path didn't already impact. Because it goes up in about 100 feet, and then it breaks off about 20, 30 degrees right. And if I'm looking at this plan, that could potentially take you through the buffer on that side. Um, the other thing is, this is, like you said, pretty steep. It's got quite a bit of upland area to it. I'm concerned with the steepness of the swales. First of all, some of the swales don't match the city standard to actually, the slopes, according to D9 detail, are supposed to be four to one. You have two to ones everywhere. And then, I'm worried about the velocity of the water coming down those swales during high rainstorms. If there's no sort of riprap, erosion control, anything, or if those haven't been designed, you're not going to have a driveway after the first couple storms because that gravel could potentially wash right out with those high velocities. Um, same thing, I'm kind of worried about the cross culvert. It's very steep. And I'm wondering the riprap apron that you show on the outside, was that actually calculated design or was that just? Yeah, it was calculated. Okay. Were those same with the uh, same with the size of the culvert. Were those did you were those provided to engineering for review? No. Okay. I, I don't believe so. No. No. Uh, I just I don't want the applicant to be stuck with a driveway and you have an emergency and it washes out and the fire department can't get up there. So I just want to make sure that those are maybe taking a little better look at just to make sure that this driveway is going to last. Okay. Yeah. Anything sure. else? We can do that. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Huh? Any member of the audience have any questions or concerns about this application? No? Okay. Well, close the public hearing. Thank you very much for your testimony. Um, so, uh, engineering. Are we, what's, what's the recommendation as far as reviewing this plan set and additional comments and concerns that Jeff just brought up? Um, I, I believe from an engineering standpoint it can be made to work. Um, I guess my concern with um, making the swales on the, on the private driveway conform to the city standard four to one slopes would really eat into the the embankment quite a bit, you know, maybe your suggestion of uh, rip rap would be a reasonable uh, way to go about that, uh, pr protecting the, uh, the swale, but yeah, so I think more or less it can be made to work, but we'd like to see some calculations on that. I, I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I, I was specifically looking at the driveway Detail, I believe, shows four to ones. That's where I was getting that. Not a city street standard, but I believe detail D9, I thought, had four to ones, unless I got the two details confused. Uh, their detail shows two to one. Our, our standard is four to one. But that's... Um, I'm fine if you're comfortable with the waiver as long as the slopes are protected such that that swale doesn't erode, and I'll leave that up to engineering to review in terms of 
yeah. the final design, and yeah. I don't think it needs to necessarily come back. I don't know that it's in in the in any of the notes or the conditions. Um, um, sorry, what was it? The any no any engineering uh, any engineering review. I don't see. Usually, we have something like review concerns regarding engineering to their satisfaction. Am I missing that, Heather? It's on page. It says three? it's President Cushion A one. Address staff review comments to the satisfaction of planning and engineering. See, I looked down farther on the list. Well, I thought you were asking but, where. But these weren't, these weren't. These weren't. These weren't comments from staff. Comments. These so are comments from the board. Add that so in. Right. We might have add to make that, that part of the motion. Yeah. Right. With uh, with board comments. Okay, yeah, I think it. we've done that in the past. Is just tack yeah. it onto that. Yeah, yeah. tack it onto that precedent condition. So, it to, cl to close the loop on the swale comment um, within the property. I think our, our standard detail of the four to one slope is. I believe really more used for you know, within the right of way okay. and may not necessarily be uh, always reasonable within the, the property. And that's fine. Like I said, I defer to engineering your decision on that. I just was more concerned with washout. Yeah. Good concern. Yeah. Okay. So in your packet, uh, 3.1 is uh, outlined to grant the waiver to section 2096 of the subdivision regulations utilizing the criteria of RSA 67444. Um, and this specifically outlines the, uh, the con uh, construction of a driveway longer than a thousand feet. Are we comfortable from an engineering perspective and the, and the fire comments, fire marshal comments, that, that we're okay with that? Yes. This, okay. Uh, essentially, that's based off of fire department's level of comfort, okay. and they were fine with it. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to grant that waiver as outlined? So moved. Second. Made by Council Champlin, seconded by Jeff. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. 3.2 is to grant conditional use permit approval to allow for the disturbance of wetland buffers for the construction of a driveway at 128 Horse Hill Road subject to the following precedent conditions. Those are outlined in precedent conditions uh, 1, 2, and 3, subsequent condition 1. And we'll note that precedent condition 1 uh, to address the staff review comments to the satisfaction of the Planning and Engineering Division. Uh, also, uh, a note regarding the comments made tonight at the board uh, at the board level. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to grant that conditional use permit as outlined? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just one other thing. I, I just, do we track how much wetland buffer disturbance there is? So I would also ask in that motion that the applicant verify that none of the existing work done to date has made any impacts on the right Can I just side. Yep. clarify that? So logging activity is exempt from that? It is. Yep. Okay. That's I believe. Thing. So if they're restoring that road back to what it was. So it, was it the road that was impacting it or the clearing? No, the part? road to the left goes up to the left, but there's like a logging road that went up to the right. It's all torn up. Everything's, and I didn't realize that could happen at a buffer. So that's new to me. So I learned Because yeah, wetlands are exempt from logging activity. Wetland impacts are exempt from logging activity. Okay. So and I we can take a look at it, but yeah. No, as long as it's, that's fine. As long as I, I did not know that. Thank you. I learned something. Okay. There you go. That's why we're here. So, would so I, where I send that so, additional, so send that additional that. comment. So do we have a motion to uh, grant that conditional use permit with those changes that I outlined? So moved. So, right. so Jeff has, uh, has made that motion. Uh, David seconded that. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. You're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Moves us on to item 8B in the record, or in the agenda. Could we read that into the record? 8B. Brett Cole, PE, on behalf of Pitco Violator LLC, requests an amendment to a conditionally approved major site plan for layout changes at 15 Integra Drive in the industrial district. Staff recommends that uh, it be determined complete, not a development of regional impact, <coughs> to open the public hearing. Not a development of regional impact. I think it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is it? The amendment. The, the amendment. Yeah. Okay. The amendment is so the, original the original one. The original one. The original one was. Okay. Right in. Um, so everybody picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> we're very now in we're tune. On it. We're so, ready to go. So the previous application was approved about a year ago. You may remember you gave an extension yeah. to it last yeah. month, and they've made some minor changes, which i um, Okay. Brent wants to come up and explain them to you. All right. Um, so we'll have the applicant come up if you're here, uh, and we'll recognize that this is a determination of completeness component to this application. Uh, outline that it's not the development of regional impact. Would someone like to make a motion to find the application complete and not the development of regional impact and open the public hearing? So moved. 
Motion made by Councilor Champlin, seconded by? Sure. Second. Jeff. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. The public hearing is open. Welcome to the table. If you guys could state your names for the record. Uh, Jennifer McCourt with McCourt Engineering Associates and Brent Cole with Granite Engineering. Um, I'm the original engineer on the project and we've been working in concert to put this project together and work on the amendment. Okay. Um, the, as we discussed when we got this approved over a year ago, um, we were going to come back with some changes um, and address the planning and engineering comments of that time. Um, the main change to the project is the um, where that bump out is on the west side. Instead of going around the building, where now the trucks will just come in the eastern driveway, go around the building, and then turn around and go back out. So we won't have any um, cross traffic. We did allow for a um, entrance to the front for. Uh, the fire department for emergency access, but all of the pedestrian cars for the employees will be out front. So it, we've really split the traffic and we won't have the loading because before the trucks were going through the building and then turning around and coming back, you won't see that anymore. So it makes a much better facade so you don't see that loading dock component. Um, and we also made the radius for Integra Drive, the 300 feet as requested, which moved the parking around a little bit. Um, we've been working with um, New Hampshire uh, Natural Heritage Bureau and Fish and Game on their comments as far as AOT is concerned. And that's what's really been taking us a little bit of time because a lot of studies had to be done. Um, so we're working on it. We're getting there. Um, and I read through the comments that we have um, to date, and I don't see any problem addressing all of those comments. There was no surprises. Okay. A uh, lot of uh, landscape comments. I know you're early in the process, but that's the most landscape comments I think I've ever seen on a technical review comment. So, um, all right. Well, yeah. You'll, you'll get there, right? Yeah, well, okay. we, we were surprised by them as well because we had already gone through this um, exercise and, and gotten a review. Um, so these were new comments to us, but Warren Street um, knows how to landscape and conquer. They'll, they'll get the plans buttoned up. Okay. There was a comment that uh, piqued my interest regarding solar, the solar arrays on the roof and the charging station options as well. I didn't know if anything had been looked at as far as ideas for that opportunities that you might want to take advantage of? Not at this point. Um, the solar is just an option that may occur sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, we would probably look at the charging stations at the same time. But I thought the solar was happening right out of the gate, no? No, that was, we just wanted to make sure it was on the table. Okay. But um, not at this point. Okay, any other comments from staff? Board have any questions, comments, concerns? Jeff? So, if you can you zoom into that driveway that you mentioned is the new emergency access to the left there. Yeah. Is that going to be used? Is that gated or is that strictly emergency? The reason I'm asking is you have that driveway right next to a driveway from a parking lot, and that little itty bitty nose of an island in between. I'm kind of curious how that becomes ADA. So I'm wondering, is it possible just to extend the parking into that access road and only have one access point there? No, that's going to be gated. Okay. A little bit to the left, I think you have an error on your plan. Unless I misunderstood, just go up, zoom up and go just a little bit where that outer parking aisle goes. There's like a curb line that kind of looks like it's shown right there. That little, yeah, it's just to the right there. See how there's like, a, almost looks like that's a curb. Is that a future parking? Is that... Yes. So that's not being built now, but it'll be gravel, flush? Correct. Okay. And I also noticed the driveway on the far side of the building, the angle's been changed. This used to have an angle to try right. and get the right turn trucks to stay more in their lane, and now with this, I noticed the truck turn shows it using the entire width of Integra Drive to make a right. That was at the first Well, 
asked and answered. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Any member of the audience have any questions or comments about this application? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you very much for your testimony. If you guys could sign in, that would be helpful. Um, in your packets, we have, ooh, let's roll these landscape comments. Okay, uh, 4.1 is to grant the waiver to section 2102, the site plan regulation to not provide screening for dumpsters since the dumpsters are behind the building and surrounded by existing Screening, uh, would someone like to make a motion to grant that waiver as outlined? I'll make that motion. Second. That motion was seconded by uh, Council Champlin. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. 4.2 is to approve the amendment to the major site plan for the proposed 356,000 square foot industrial building for manufacturing warehouse and office space and we'll note that that is uh, with precedent conditions one through five subsequent conditions one through four would someone like to make a motion to grant that amendment to the major site plan as outlined Move approval. second motion is made by council champlin seconded by jeff all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed that motion carries you're all set thank you very much and we will move on to item 8c in our agenda I'm refusing. Okay, for the record, uh, Teresa yeah. is going to recuse herself from that. If you could uh, step away, okay, that would be shall great. I leave? I'll go outside. Yeah, please. Thank you. Don't forget I'm out there. We won't. We'll call you <laughs> this back. This time. Yeah, How could we? Have <laughs> well, I wasn't here, Teresa. I would not have left you out here. Earl wasn't here last time. Earl wasn't here. Come on up. All right, if we can read that into the record. Wilcox and Barton LLC, on behalf of New Hampshire Public Risk Management Exchange, request minor site plan approval for the addition of impervious surface for the purpose of constructing a patio and sidewalk at 46 Donovan Street in the Institutional District. Staff recommends <coughs> the application be determined complete, not a development of regional impact, and to open the public hearing. Okay, so we have a determination of completeness component, not a development of regional impact. Would someone like to make a motion to find the application complete, not a development of regional impact, and open the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion has been made uh, by Jeff, seconded by Council Champlin. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Public hearing is open. Welcome to the table. If you could state your name for the record. Yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Erin Lambert. I'm with Wilcox and Barton. I'm here today on behalf of Primex. Just wanted to make sure my client, um, I think, hit some traffic and is not here. So uh, I will try to answer all those questions on his behalf. Um, so um, the property is located at 46 Donovan Street. Uh, I'll start with the cover just to orient you to where we are. Um, so Donovan Street is tucked into the south end of Concord. Um, this is the existing building. Um, there, it's quite developed uh, with the parking in the front. You wouldn't really see um, the subject of this application. It's tucked into the back. Um, so I just wanted to start here and show you where that is. This is the project area um, in the back. So Primex, um, if you're not familiar, it stands for the New Hampshire Public Risk Management Exchange. Um, they are a nonprofit public risk pool that ensures towns, cities, school districts, counties, um, and other districts. Um, so the, the use of this building um, is they provide both the risk pool insurance coverage, but they also provide training and leadership opportunities for their members. Um, so what's before you today is a patio addition that they're looking to construct um, in, in effectively in the back of the building. Um, the project does a couple of things. There are three doors that exit the building there now that all have a step down and onto grass. Um, and so uh, the project will provide landings at each door, which is currently compliant with code, and then will provide um, a an impervious um, accessible walkway out to the, um, the, the parking lot for safe access. Um, but in addition to that, they've got this beautiful space um, that's sort of underutilized, and they thought it would be a great opportunity to build out a patio and sitting area for the use exclusively of their employees or their members when they're there for training or other leadership opportunities. So we did want to let you know it's not something that would be available to the, to the public, so it's not an expansion of the use. It's really an amenity to be used by the existing users of the building. Um, we're here before you today because it's about 2,800 square feet. Um, of that, about 750 square feet of it will be pervious pavers. Um, however, under the ordinance, they still count as impervious. So um, there'll be a, an asphalt sidewalk to a couple of um, pervious patio, pa 
patio areas, um, a granite seat wall, um, and those other concrete amenities. So um, it's tucked in the back. I'll just show you the photos just in case you're interested. It, we don't need to do any tree clearing. There's a really nice, um, well-established buffer um, down to, to the brook, and we're not touching any of that. Uh, there's actually a bit of a berm, and we're, we're just really developing the uh, landscaped area. So this first part, this picture down in the lower left corner, is where we'll be removing this, this curb to create um, an accessible tip down to uh, an asphalt sidewalk, which will wind around the back of the building. Um, and I apologize, we're going to bounce around a little bit. But if I had walked to this corner, it's the same as the lower right. So they're going to walk around the building. And in the lower right is the first of the two patio spaces. Um, and then if you look up one more, this is the larger of the patio spaces. So you can see folks would come out of one of the training rooms um, and have this patio or use this um, for emergency egress if that were necessary. Um, there is site lighting that's being added. There was a lighting plan. Um, and there's a beautiful landscape plan um, prepared by our teammate, Tara Inc. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention as part of the project, they are adding um, two EV charging stations in the parking lot. So there'll be two stations available for four cars. Um, that's the only change that's being made in the parking lot. There's no change in the pavement. It's just the striping and the signage for those two. They actually already have an electric stub uh, that was put in uh, as part of a different lighting project years ago. So it's sort of um, prepped for that. So that is the extent of the project. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Looks lovely. Any any cover? <coughs> any any uh, overhead cover? No, we there is not any overhead cover. It was something that was contemplated, but it's not built into the project. Okay, and I. Uh, there is a little bit of shade. We were out there, and there's a decent amount of shade that comes <coughs> from the existing vegetation. They felt like that was sufficient. Okay. The gas grill out there is that what's out there? And there is. Yep. Okay, little sitting area. Okay. Any other questions from the board, Jeff? Yeah. Oh, nope, nope. Let these two gentlemen go first. I bet. Matt, I'm talking a lot. Matt, I was just going to be wise and say, could you read through the 102 pages of supplementary materials for us? <laughs> I would be happy to do I've that. I've never seen anything like that. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the drainage, the 102, it's like all the soils, I think, and everything. Crazy. Yeah. A lot of work. There's a lot of work that went into this landscape plan. Yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. I'm hoping I get an invite over there for groundbreaking. 102 pages. Byron. <laughs> I was going to ask if we were going to be invited for the groundbreaking. I know. But apparently we are. Maybe I'll talk them into doing a business after hours for the yeah. chamber or something. I, you know, that would be a great idea. Business after hours for the chamber would be great. It would be a great spot for it, too. Yeah. Jeff? The only question I have is on the lighting plan. Yes. You do have residents that are right yes. at the back. And I noticed your light isn't spilling out to them, but mm -hmm. is it possible to put shades on the back of those three or four lights yeah. so that they're not seeing them? Even though the, the technically the light spillage isn't there, but they're still going to see. Yeah, that we certainly light. can. Yeah, the nice thing I'm finding with the LEDs is they have a really good opportunity to point them down and make sure they're only where we want them to be and not where they're not. But we certainly can. Yeah, if they can just look into this some sort of shape. back just to make sure that you know. Absolutely. I'm guessing probably that no one's here, but just looking at it, they purposely put up a fence, you know, to to block the view. The other thing I noticed is. There are some existing ground mount floodlights back there. Are those being? Those will be removed. Okay. Yep, everything we're showing will, will supersede anything that's out there today. Okay. Including, I think I saw an irrigation head. Uh, those will all have to be relocated, yeah. And this, every, all the landscaping that was designed as part of this project is, um, is native. Okay, that's it, thank you. I noticed that the filter sock symbol wasn't on the legend, but I saw it's in the review comment. So it is. We will be sure to add that. I, I, I was shocked that it wasn't there. So <laughs> keeping us on our toes. It's every every T is crossed and I is dotted. I here. had to find comments. That is excellent. Excellent. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so and you're going to address the issues regarding the lights village. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so in our uh, in our packets, we've got 3.1 uh, to grant minor. Any? So I'm sorry, I've completely skipped my 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 process here. Any further questions? Any uh, questions from the staff? Any member of the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this application? Okay, we'll close the public hearing and uh, look to your packet. Thank you, Aaron, for your testimony. Um, 3.1 is to grant minor site plan approval for the proposed patio and associated site improvements at 46 Donovan Street, subject to the following precedent and subsequent conditions outlined, and that is in precedent conditions 1, 2, and 3. Subsequent, 
conditions one through four. Would someone like to make a motion to grant that minor site plan as outlined? So moved. Motion's been Second. made by Jeff, seconded by Matt Hicks. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. And uh, Teresa, if you're out there, you can come back. Thank you very much. I, I do Thank have to you. say, I, I, I walked back there. I think this is going to be a very That's a great nice addition. Yeah, that's a great looking spot. Facility. Hey, Aaron, if you see Teresa out there, just send her back in. Thank you. Or send her home. It's fine. Or you could, yeah. <laughs> Don't don't we offer that. Home don't offer that twice. She'll be out the door. Leave her stuff. All right. Let's uh, move on to item 8D. If we could read that into the record. Novus Engineering LLC, on behalf of SV Property SS LLC, requests minor site plan approval for the addition of a 4,000 square foot structure for the expansion of a storage use at 220 Loudon Road in the General Commercial District. Uh, staff recommends the application be determined complete, not a development of regional impact, and to open public hearing. Jose, could you see if Teresa's in that little area over on the side there? Well, I can hear her talking. Yeah, I think she is. I think I hit her in the door. <laughs> you call that. <laughs> we weren't really calling you, but we didn't want to start without you. So poor Aaron Lambert's walking. I was kind of worried about poor you. Aaron's walking downstairs looking for you, trying to figure out where you are. Yeah, right so. over here. I know it. Yeah. Okay, Teresa, so we're moving on to <coughs> item 8D in our agenda, Nobis Engineering on behalf of SV Property SS LLC. Uh, so <coughs> we will get a quick update from staff if we can on this. Did you um, do your motion for completeness? I know we did not. So let's do a determination of completeness. Sorry. You I started listening. it. I was waiting for Teresa to come back. Uh, Okay, so uh, staff has determined the application complete, not a development of regional impact. Would someone like to make a motion to find the application complete, not a development of regional impact, and open the public hearing? Motion, I'll, I would, I'll make that motion. Would someone like to second, second it? The guy's not listening to me over there. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I, I was trying to give somebody else a chance. That motion carries. The public hearing's that. open. Uh, and if we could get a quick staff update on this one. That would be great. Sure. Yep. So they're adding an additional storage facility um, building to this facility. They've got um, a special exception and a couple of variances to allow this to happen. Um, they're relocating some parking. The only thing you'll see in here um, that staff was made aware of when we were doing the review is there's an old 2001 report, the Loudon Road Corridor Study, that shows a proposed road connection to Branch Turnpike. We cannot require anything from the applicant at this time, but if they're feeling benevolent in any sort of way, um, we just put it in the report, just mostly to put them on notice that this exists out there. Um, it would impact their proposed building, so it would we would not tear the building down to build a road, but it's just something to have sort of memorialized in a report that this exists out there. So just, we just wanted to point that out. Um, but otherwise, no other concerns. I just did want to also, um, we received an email from a woman that lives at uh, McKenna's Purchase. She was concerned it was going to be a two-story building, but I confirmed that it's one story, correct? Yes. Um, and she just said as long as the vegetative buffer remains, which I believe it showed on the plan that it mm -hmm. will. So I just wanted to, um, her name was Heather Klein, just wanted to put that in the record that we did hear from her. And that's it. Okay. So just for the record, so... In, your, in the notes here in the review comments 1.3 uh, outlines the the map line of future streets so uh, planning board and the applicants are aware it's that it's not a map line of future map. street it's not it's not oh, so okay. that's the problem that when the report was okay. accepted oh. and then the city didn't do anything I misunderstood that. I apologize yep. they okay. would not be able to do this at all if it was a map line okay of future great street. so no concerns from staff other than what you've outlined there I didn't see anything else big on it so okay welcome to the table if you guys could state your names for the record uh, Doug Lee, owner. Uh, Sean McDowell with Novus Engineering. Okay, so the public hearing is open. Tell us about this project, if you can. Uh, will do. Um, so as you just heard, uh, more or less, you know, this this is the storage station. There's approximately uh, about 40,000 square feet of storage that exists there today. As you can see on the north side, it's off of Loudon Road. On the south side is... Um, Branch Turnpike. Um, so on the east side of the property is where we're proposing the additional 4,000 square feet of storage. Um, 
they're modular units that would be set on the ground surface. There's no utilities involved with these. Um, we took a look at stormwater for the increased runoff um, produced by these um, modular units as well as some small parking changes. There's an existing pond on right in this adjacent to the proposed um, modular units to the um, east. And that pond does have adequate capacity um, to handle the increase in um, impervious area. We provided that to engineering. Um, I think as, as Beth briefly mentioned, there's some parking changes happening here as well. As with most projects along this um, section of Loudon Road, um, we're, we're uh, providing a right of way easement along the frontage um, for future Loudon Road um, widening should that happen. So in order to do that, we're taking our five existing parking spaces that face Loudon Road today, and we're shifting them to this east side and pulling them out of that, um, what would then become the right-of-way easement. So that's going from five spaces down to four, adding a handicapped space. Also in the southwest corner, we're proposing a few more additional parking spaces. We've got the modular units being added, some minor parking changes, and then also we're just doing some uh, some landscaping improvements around the areas that we're doing the work as well. So that kind of concludes what we're doing. Okay. Well, these are fascinating. So th there's two units per unit. They're just completely modular. They're brought in on site and laid down onto a pad. And they're... They come in parts and they're assembled on the site. Oh, okay. It's yeah. kind of like a... A little kit? A little kit, yeah. Interesting. Okay, questions from the from the board? Jeff, come on. No questions. I'm good. Any, any good comments from staff? Staff's good. Any comments from the audience? Anybody have any questions or comments about this application? I have a question. Yes, is, sir. Is this, is this why my, my rent's going up? <laughs> Are, you're there? I am there. <laughs> I just got your email. <laughs> oh. oh. Hence the, need for, hence the need for more storage. <laughs> Supply and demand. I was going to say it's demand. <laughs> so how long have you been there? Probably about three or four years. Have you ever had the rent raised before? Uh, yeah, just uh, I think just when you acquired it. Most of that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Call, call me after. <laughs> uh, we, we, we have not... Most of the units haven't had rent increase in two years, at least. And we've only put one, our first increase in, so I'm, I'm please, gonna, please, I'm not, I'm not gonna feel free to call me. I, no, no, I'm not gonna call you, yeah. but thank you. <laughs> okay, any other comments, questions, concerns? Can I just yes. clarify? So the uh, 1.3, so that will not be a condition. We just wanted to make sure that 3.1 says that we've addressed all the technical review comments, but that doesn't include putting in a right of first refusal. So that would be struck from... Want to. Not unless you want to. No. <laughs> that would be hard for us to do. So if... Yeah. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Nope. So if Crane's had approval tonight, it, that condition could be struck from the... Yeah. Okay. So the technical review is, uh, te is technically two... Section, just section two. That's two. just general comments. Okay, yeah, yep. that's just called review comments, not technical oh, review. Yeah. So I just want, okay. Sorry, yep, usually it's called, I think that was just Got it, a, okay. okay, thank you. Typo on my part. Yeah, uh, and just for the record, we won't hold you to that. We have so. no legal instrument to force yeah. you to do anything. Right. Um, we appreciate the right-of-way easement along Loudon Road. Um, but mostly it was sort of just to get it out there. Sure, as, appreciate just that. Just so you're aware in the future. Yep. Right. Yep. If something came about. And they're easy to move. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now we know. Not when they're, not when they're full. Yeah, the secret's out. Okay, so uh, in our in our packets, we've, we'll have we close the public hearing. Sorry. Um, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you very much for your testimony. If you could just sign into the to the sheet there uh, before you leave, that would be great. Uh, so in your packets, we've got 3.1 is to grant minor site plan approval for the proposed the patio, patio and associated no. site improvements. Oy vey. So it's been a rough month. Guys. Let me know. It's been, it's been a rough. Let me know uh, where uh, the precedent conditions are all uh, are all wrong too. Is that the wrong report? 
No, it's not at all. It's just I did not. Um, right away easements. No, it looks like the no, right away easements part of it. Price, pr the precedent and subsequent conditions are all right. It's just the description. It's it just the be description. It should say okay. that. It or the construction of a 4,000 square oh, foot right, self storage unit building with associated parking space for visions at 220 Loud Road. Okay, so that's what Beth just said with precedent conditions one, two, three, four, subsequent conditions one through four. Uh, would someone like to make a motion yeah. to grant that minor site plan, right? It's a minor site minor plan. Minor site yes. plan approval as outlined. So moved. Second. Uh, motion's been made by Matt, seconded by Jeff. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries, uh, and that's it. You're all set. Thank you very much, and good luck. All right, let's move on in our agenda to item 8E. TF Moran, on behalf of the New Hampshire Army National Guard, requesting minor site plan approval for construction of a parking area in a portion of the Pembroke Road right-of-way at the corner of Loudoun and Airport Road in the Institutional District. Uh, staff recommends the application be determined complete, not a development of regional impact. And um, Oh, wait, we already did all that, didn't we? This must yeah, we did that last this, month. Yeah, this is a chairman complete action. I'm on automatic pilot. Um, staff recommends opening the public hearing. <laughs> okay, so let's open the public hearing. If we could get a quick staff update on this project, that would be great. Sure. Um, so just in a nutshell, so Nick will probably do a better job explaining the whole thing. Um, Army National Guard has been utilizing the, the right-of-way space for cars and different you know, access issues in the past and they asked to uh, construct this parking lot in the right of way um, and make some improvements to the building that encroaches in a portion of the right of way. So they're, uh, they need a discontinuous from the city for the portion of the building that extends into the right of way and a license from the city for the actual improvements in the remaining right of way. Both of those items are going to council next month. Um, you all vo uh, voted to recommend the discontinuous last month. Um, and with that, I will let Nick, well, there's another issue. We'll bring it up later, you, or unless I'll, you want to bring it up. Make sure I bring it up as part okay. of the presentation. Take it away. Okay. All right. Welcome Good. to the table. If you could state your name for the record. Certainly. My name is Nick Golan. I'm a licensed engineer and principal with the firm TF Moran. Um, here this evening on behalf of the Army National Guard, um, Mr. Ken Coombs, who's an architect and PM with their construction and facility maintenance office is also with me. Um, relative to what we're proposing, um, Heather, you gave a, an app description. Um, you know, this is tax map block and lot 631Z98, one minute man way. The parcel itself is comprised of approximately 42 <coughs> acres, but the work that we're doing is in the immediate vicinity of um, Loudon Road and Airport Road at the intersection relative to uh, the Loudon Road uh, right away. So relative to what we are proposing, we'll flip to the site layout plan chat a little bit about that. Um, all right, there we go. So the intent of this project, um, you know, one, improve the aesthetics of the building. I think anyone who's been through that intersection sees that it's a, a little antiquated and, and due for a facelift, um, but also to provide a wayfinding point for veterans seeking assistance with their benefits, as well as recruitment that's by appointment. Um, the new identity entrance will also serve to reduce the number of turnaways that the guard experiences at their gated entries, which better separates visitors from the secure portions of the facility, um, which is one of the utmost important things for a facility such as this. Um, relative to the improvements that are proposed, um, we're looking to finalize really what's a kind of a void of pavement <laughs> such that we provide 13 parking spaces, two of which would be handicap accessible. Uh, other improvements consist of bike rack, um, retaining wall uh, for aesthetic purposes, granite benches, as well as landscape improvements. As part of those improvements, um, the lands we have we provided landscaping as far as that overall design element. There is going to be a need for the license area, uh, which is comprised of just under 14,000 square feet, and then a street discontinuance area, which is comprised of the building area itself, as well as an appropriate buffer to account for either canopies, building overhangs, or the foundation of the building itself, such that we can secure that no, no portion of the building would continue to be located within the right-of-way. Um, relative to the application, there are two waivers, uh, both of which I think are fairly typical to the board. Um, one for signage to be provided at a later date. Then we have shown the location of the monument sign. 
gives a little bit better idea of our, our landscaping pattern. Um, and then the second is in regards to providing architectural renderings versus elevations. So relative to the financing mechanisms that the Guard uses, um, money has been released for that initial phase to provide um, renderings so that um, they can get an understanding of what this would look like, but the formal elevations and building design plans would be part of a subsequent release of money. Um, we've had the opportunity to read through the engineering comments. Um, didn't see anything in there that we couldn't address, so that should be straightforward. Um, one of the additional comments, though, has to do with a 2019 site plan approval. Um, and this is in regards to the Pembroke Road Blodgett Street intersection. So if I back all the way up, this shows it a little bit better. So this is the location. Um, the turning movements are a little awkward. It's not well defined. Yeah, I, I beat you to it, Jeff. Um, I, 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 I'm sure I, you want to chime in on this one. So I'm no, trying to beat you to not. it. I was going to be good. Uh, all right, <laughs> we'll wait and see. Um, the reality is those improvements were tied to a previous site plan approval. Um, it's been suggested that those improvements now be applied to this site plan. Um, similar to the discussion earlier with the waiver request relative to architectural elevations, you know, the guard works by, by a very precise procedure of how they release funds. So trying to group that prior project with this one creates some difficulties from the funding mechanism. Sure. And if, if we need Ken to speak to that element, we can. So what we'd like to ask is if either the board would be willing to let that be a condition of what the city council believes to be required or otherwise, if you feel it's absolutely necessary to condition the site plan on that approval, um, to m slightly modify that condition such that it reads to provide those improvements or as otherwise directed by city council. That'll also give us the opportunity to work with city staff to see if there's another uh, potential compromise as to making sure that that work gets done because we realize there needs to be an enforceable mechanism to, to tie it to it. Uh, one suggestion is the site plan, another suggestion is the licensing agreement, another suggestion is the discontinuance. So in a way, we're kind of kicking the can down the street, but it really gives us the opportunity to work as a group to fun come up with what's the best solution um, to make sure that the guard can fund those improvements. They're not adverse to making them. It was just as part of the prior project in 2019, um, there were some cost overruns on some additional requests um, by the city that, that basically those funds evaporated to do the Blodgett Street work. Um, so they know it needs to be get done. Uh, it's within their best interest to get it done. It's just a matter of how do they pay for it and making sure um, that they do it within their procedures. So that would be our request relative to that component of the project. So I'll try and be short and sweet uh, with your time. And if there's questions, happy to answer them. Always appreciate that. Questions from the board? Jeff? One comment. I have contracts with the Army Corps and the Air Force. I totally understand the funding. So I personally would support being able to move it down as a condition totally get uh, how that works the funds are the funds and you don't have any extra I do have a couple questions yes sir I noticed that the adjacent lot that triangular piece has no survey when I went out there there are some mature trees that I believe are either on the property line or just inside when you stand there and you kind of look at street view and you see where the hydrant is mm -hmm. the tree looks like it's inside the hydrant between toward toward the building but yet I see no trees on this plan and I'm just concerned if trees are going to be impacted during this construction so if that's something that could be taken a look at mm -hmm. um, on the area that's kind of where the existing sidewalk runs the angle it's curbed today and there's that basin that's set real low in the existing pavement mm -hmm. is are we, you proposing to keep the curb and just bring that elevation of that area up? Sure. Or is it possible to remove the curb and kind of create a nice grass area down into that catch basin? So what we're essentially doing is, I think, somewhat what you're recommending. Um, that pavement, there's going to be a, a break such that it'll allow sheet flow. Yep. Um, the vast majority, so relative to the grading scheme, created a high point to pitch it really in the opposite direction to an, uh, another no I get that I'm talking about the sidewalk right where you are right this now right, right on the here. property yeah there's the curb there and I'm wondering are you keeping the drop at the curb or are you pulling the curb out kind of doing a grassed area there it's kind of was so this area is all grass and it'd be reshaped so that it directs towards that catch basin I would disagree with you that that's all grass today no, 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 As part of this proposed plan. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying uh, my part is. I thought you were saying. There is okay. the existing sidewalk that 
um, it's further beyond, which is really this area here. Right. We're, we're not touching that sidewalk. That stays just the way it is. Even the curb. So yep. you're just going to We're going to reshape of... the area that's in okay. front of that and make sure that it provides a positive direction towards that catch basin. The only other thing I see is the catch basin to the right today is off in kind of a swale. Um, you have no pipes um, shown. That catch basin is full. So it should be a note that that catch basin and any associated yep. piping gets cleaned. Um, also, I would suggest instead of doing a 90 degree curb at the structure, can you splay those out to 45 so that a plow truck can swing by, swing in, clean off the top of the basin and keep going? If that's agreeable to engineering, that's certainly something we could look at. Yeah. I just know from the first one I designed like that at DOT, the first time it rained and it filled up with ice, the foreman called me to get out there with a shovel and clean it myself. Nice. Um, which I did, actually, and he was surprised when he showed up and I was already cleaning it. And it, it just becomes a nightmare for maintenance. I wouldn't see it being an issue to splay out those angles to provide yeah, smoother transition. Yeah, I don't know, 45. It also provides I mean, they don't a, a wider far. throat to make sure that the storm water is getting into the basin. It, yeah, it's, it's more for literally so the plow truck can literally just sweep in there Scoop, scoop off the snow and keep going and not have to pile it on top of it and then have to go manually clean it. And I assume they're doing, you're doing a full depth reconstruction of that whole area? Yeah. Great. Now I will, I will remark that you said you weren't going to have many comments tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I said I wasn't going to have anybody at You asked me about Blodgett and I knew Blodgett was already tied to the 2019, so I wasn't going to go there. All right, all right. I won't, uh, well, do you I won't know. give you a hard time. I actually, the only other question I had was any lighting. Um, no, so there is some existing street light that's out there. Okay. Um, there's an up light that's associated with um, the existing flagpoles, but the reality is that this, this area is being used consistent with kind of like an eight, eight to five. So there, there wasn't any formal site lighting that's being okay. proposed in this area. And I think in, in part one, they don't feel they need it, but two, you're putting that site lighting directly in the area of that intersection. You wouldn't want to distract people. So it didn't no, seem to I, be a need. No, I'm not saying I needed it. I just didn't see any, so I was questioning it. That is correct. Those flagpoles, aren't they on the other parcel? Now that you mentioned, I hadn't, I hadn't looked at that directly. I just know, I know that that is that there as far as a lighting element. Because you're talking that the flagpoles are in that little triangular piece. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's fair. That's, there's that's, the big that's fair. That is that is on the adjacent property. Yeah, because the tr the trees there that the, I don't know if the city lights that or if that's the guard that lights that. I can't tree. say I'm overly educated on. I think that actually gets plugged into our building. Okay. Well, no, because I noticed there's a, there's a historical marker out there. There's an adopt a highway spot. But then I was looking at this going, there's no easement or second property line. I just thought that was odd. It is odd. So, um, but I assume it's agreeable with the owner. I'm not saying anything changed. I just didn't know if the flagpoles were moving as they were part of the guards stuff. But you clarified that. Thank you. Okay. Certainly, John. Questions. You sell tickets next time these two are in a meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can raise a little levity never hurts, I suppose. <laughs> never hurts. It's all in good, good Okay, taste. any other questions or comments? Any member of the audience have any questions or concerns about this application? No. Nope. We'll close the public hearing. Thank you for your testimony. Um, <coughs> so... I have a confession. Yes. I messed up my recommendations, so I forgot to put the recommendation for the waiver in there. So the oh, 4.1 should be... Um, grant the waiver yep. from section 1203 4 and 15081 of the site plan regulations. Uh, actually, I'm reading the wrong one. I yeah. brought up another plan to fix it, and now I'm making it worse. <laughs> Let me find the right plan, why don't I? Uh, grant the waiver from section 1203 4 and 15081 of the site plan regulations. I'm, I'm reading the same, the same thing. Hold on. Architectural I'm sorry. drawings. I'm having a. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's the right one. Uh, okay, to not it. provide ar architectural drawings uh, since they're going to provide them at a later date, uh, utilize, utilizing the criteria of 674-44-3E uh, subsection 2, uh, specific mm -hmm. circumstances relative to the condition of the land or the, or the application will properly carry out the intent and spirit of the regulations. Okay, so just for the record, we'll move uh, all of what's in item 2.1 over under, under 4.1 as part of the waiver uh, granting of the waiver uh, so for the record uh, we'll, we'll uh, change 4.1 to 4.2 and the new 4.1 will be to 
uh, grant a waiver, uh, the applicant requests waivers to section 12034 and 15018 of the site plan regulations to not provide stamped architectural drawings at this time. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to grant that waiver as outlined? So moved. Second. Motion is made by Councilor Pierce, seconded by Jeff. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries and 4.1 is to grant minor site plan approval for construction of a parking area and a building addition in the Pembroke Avenue right away adjacent to One Minute Man Way subject to the following conditions and those are outlined in precedent conditions one through four and subsequent conditions one, two, and three. No additions or any changes to that, right? No. Uh, would someone like to make a, make a motion to grant minor site plan approval as outlined? I make a mocha. I make a motion. I make a motion. <laughs> make a motion. Second. A MOCA motion has been made by <laughs> Councilor Champlin, seconded by Matt just, Hicks. Any I just discussion? want to add yep. to that. I just want to make sure that the in the condition is to look at the trees to make sure if any trees yep. are impacted and look at the drainage. Yep. And I had uh, uh, a note uh, regarding the Vlogger Street payments uh, or as otherwise directed. I don't know if there's any how we want to handle that or how we want to. So, uh, uh, for in. clarification, that piece is not included in the recommendations for the motion. There was a recommendation that was made in the report, but it was not included. So, we're good with the okay. motions that you've made. All right. So, with Jeff's amendment, would someone like to make a motion to grant minor site plan approval as outlined? So moved. moved. Second. It's been made by Councillor Champlin and seconded by Jeff. Any discussion? Oh, we did that already. Yeah. All those, yeah, in, all those I, in favor? I, 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 aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> that motion carries. See, I can make a mistake. It's not even that late. That's <laughs> <It's laughs> your one. It's it's right. Right. Okay, <laughs> Nick, you're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you all. <laughs> Let's move on in our agenda to item 8F. Uh, Again, uh, this is nobody else is here. So, okay. We'll read it into the record. Sure. Granite State Credit Union requests a major site plan approval for expansion of a parking lot, including the addition of four drive through teller lanes at 311 Sheep Davis Road in the Gateway Performance District. Um, ap this application was determined complete last month. Uh, staff recommends to open the public hearing, and I can give you an update. On okay. That. We'll open the public hearing, and if we could get a staff update, that would be great. If you guys could sign in on the sheet there, we'll come back to you in just a second. Um, so... We didn't really have any issues with the site plan on this at all. It was uh, mostly the uh, energy went into uh, submitting the license for the city because a portion of the improvements were in the old uh, Sheep Davis Road right of way, um, which they always had been, but there had been additions over the years. And uh, in this in this one, we was finally determined this is too much of the of the private improvements in the right of way <coughs> is no longer just an access drive. Now these are drive through teller related to the use kind of drives. Um, so that was submitted to council at this past meeting and they did grant the license for the improvements in that area. Um, other than that, we really have no other comments on it. Okay. And is it really ITM machines? I see ITM yes. machines. Mm -hmm. It is? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Correct. Welcome to the table. If you could state your names for the record. Yes. Um, well, thank you for having us tonight. Um, my name is Morgan Dunson. I'm with um, Nobis Group. I'm the engineer on this project. And Michelle Plaza from Granite State Credit Union. Um, so a brief overview is um, this is Granite State Credit Union existing on uh, 311 Sheep Davis Road. Um, it has a building, um, the bank building, and then three existing uh, drive-through lanes. What is proposed is um, expansion of this bypass lane right here to make it so there's three lanes that approach the uh, existing drive-throughs and then an addition of four ITM um, teller machines um, to the north. Um, the addition of the ITMs is to um, be able to um, meet the current demand for um, the bank. So there's no improvements to the existing building, as I said before. It's just to meet the current demand that they've seen um, after COVID and to decrease um, in-person um, contact and stuff. Um, we are requesting a waiver um, for section 32.01 um, for the traffic study. Um, we have provided um, a 
memorandum from uh, GPI's traffic engineer stating that there's really no use in submitting a full-blown traffic study due to we're not um, expanding any of the existing building um, and this is to um, to uh, meet up with the current demand. Um, I don't have anything else to say. Okay. Questions, comments, Jeff? Uh, I can understand where they're getting GPI saying the memo. If this is the wave of the future, I'm wondering, is it reasonable for the board to ask that they do traffic counts today and traffic counts after it opens to verify what these increase, these types of units would increase? So the next bank that comes in front of the board, we have some sort of yeah, thank you. Criteria or some type of at least, I'm fine with the full waiver, but you know, to do a few counts is not an extreme expense. Maybe now and six months after it opens or something like that. A, it verifies did it increase traffic? You know, you're talking about a demand now. This is like saying we open inside the building, there's two teller machine, two, two tellers at a, at a window, and if people come in and they can't, the line's too long, they leave. But if you suddenly open up to four, more people come into the building and stay. I'm just wondering, will this have some induced demand? Um, and I'm fine with not having necessarily a full study, but I'm thinking maybe it might be worth at least having some before after data. And, and at what point after? I, I would say like six months. So it's had a chance to get up, running. People are getting used to it because there isn't any data out there. I mean, I scoured. I'm a traffic engineer if you haven't figured by tonight. <laughs> sure. So, and. Um, there isn't really any data on this. And you read it, and there are pros and cons. Some will tell you there's no increase. Some will say it does increase because it becomes more easier for people to get there. The lines are shorter, you know, so it can have demand. So it's, I, I can't say <coughs> definitely, but I think having some counts, not to say we're going to require them to do anything if the counts went up, but at least we have an idea, like I said, for the next one that comes in, the next bank and whatnot. Can I speak on, to that? Hang on just a second. Heather? Um, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that that's an, an appropriate role mm -hmm. for the board to play. Um, you know, they're applying, you're right, there's not a lot of data out there, but they're, um, you know, they're, this is their project, and I don't know that they owe us, especially since you're saying, and I agree with what you're saying, that we wouldn't actually ask them to do anything. Um, if there was something riding on it, like, hey, if right. it's greater, we might need you to X. But if we're just saying, we just want to know, um, I'm, not, right. I'm not convinced that's an appropriate So I figured um, that's action. what you were going to say. And I, I, my question would be, is it something we could, we could ask city staff, just not as a condition to the applicant, nothing right. to do with the applicant. The applicant is off the hook on it. But address it to city staff and say, hey, there's an opportunity to, to put this on the record. For this type of an environment, and which would be very appropriate for restaurants or other things as well, that may want to do it. Yeah, I don't I know if they. I mean, if they take advantage, if they take advantage of it. But Jeff's point's well taken. If it, if it's going to be there, and it's it's from this to this, there's an opportunity for us to do a little research. Yeah, on I that. think that's a great idea. I'll bring it up um, okay. with staff and see if it's if we have time to do something. Yeah, and if it, if, if and if it ends up being staff does it, like we go out and have somebody yeah. do some counts now and do some if staff. I'm fine with the staff to, I just, this is a unique opportunity. Yeah, I agree. Because you know if this works, and I hope it does for you, and I hope it's great, I can see the next bank saying, we want it, and the next bank saying, right. we want it. And I'd hate to say, we keep just saying, the blinders on, right. oh, it's no traffic increase, it's no, no. and it, yeah. we points, don't know. Points valid, it's just, it's not fair to the applicants yeah, to, and, to right. put it on to them as well. That's fine. Right. I was going to say, I think we already have some of those in the city. And I don't think it's, I think that's the point. I don't think it's fair to put it on this applicant. Yeah. There are going to be national studies there. There are going to be state studies. I'm not so sure. You know, I think w the city, mm -hmm. we have to do our homework yeah. ourselves yeah. on it and yeah. not ask If we want to do it, we could do it at yeah. our nickel. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah but not, not on there. And no, it's not to fair to them. Jeff's point's well taken and it opens up an opportunity. Might as well present it to the city as staff, but not burden you guys with it. Did I, I sure. cut you off, but did, did I, <laughs> did I, take some of the wind out of your sails with any comment you wanted to make? Um, just that I wanted to note that the purpose of us um, expanding our technology to ITMs is not to, in to increase traffic to the location. It's really that it allows us to more efficiently utilize our staff because with an ITM, 
you can have one teller who can be um, working completely remote. Um, they could be working from home. They could be working at one of our other locations. Uh, okay. And they can serve multiple um, ITM locations. So they can serve multiple members kind of set simultaneous they toggle between them okay. so it's really for a more efficient use of our staff because the person it's not a one-to-one -one. Okay. i may be while the and helping one person um, while another person is being queued into my workload so it's not like your traditional atm um, drive-through where you have a teller in the behind the window they're they're kind of virtual they're presented to you on the screen of the machine and as a consumer you have the option to to speak to um, that virtual it's not virtual it's a, a it's um, person it's a live yeah, person, it's a it's live person. Right or there. if you're doing a really quick transaction you can just use it as an ATM so you have the flexibility to use either so um, we aren't anticipating increased traffic and actually since COVID at all of our locations and we do have these machines deployed elsewhere we have them at one teller um, one drive-through lane at each other location of ours, as well as um, in our Nashua location. It's all ITMs there, and we are in the process of um, opening a location, or we actually just opened a location in Rochester, which has them. But since the pandemic, uh, overall volume at our um, locations has been, it's down significantly. Most people got used to being able to do things through the self-service means um, on their own and haven't chose to come back into the branches, so. They've come back in smaller numbers. So just, and it might be in the packet here, and I apologize, but just for me, the uneducated one, ITM stands for? Interactive. Interactive, inter interactive teller machine. Teller machine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Meaning you can do either an ATM or an ITM. Thank you for asking. Yeah, well, I didn't know, so I, I'll, I'll take the shot for you. I didn't either, thanks. Byron. <laughs> now I only have one question. Uh, uh, I'm not a traffic engineer, nor do I play one on planning board, uh, but um, I'll ask a question which is probably based on, on ignorance. Uh, is there any concern uh, where the ITM machines are? Any concern about the cars jockeying to get out of the slot there and all making that left-hand turn and trying to get you know into the loop around and out? Mm -hmm. um, no, so we did run um, passenger car turns out of each of these ITM and the drive aisle is um, appropriately sized to be 30 feet wide to get the cars out accordingly. Okay. So, so it shouldn't be of any concern. Right. I've been With through a lot. I've been through a lot of ATMs and, and, and teller windows and sometimes people are, you know, these days sometimes people are, you know, putting hand cleanser on them, on their hands or not really paying attention as they're, as they're letting the car move out of the gate there. And with the ITMs, the, uh, they actually require their, it's a wider machine than the ATMs, which is really kind of the driving um, force reason that we're looking to relocate the, the lanes. So it's a wider lane as a result of that okay. because the machines themselves require a wider island. So it, it, it takes up more space right, yeah. as a result. Okay. All right. So Thank the intent you. isn't to remove those ATM machines that are at the existing building. Nope, those stay. Uh, teller, teller lines, sorry, I whatever you call them. Drive up lines, okay. Okay. And there's no way to get around the inside. Is there, okay, so you can go to the ITM to go out to the right, you go in the inside lane to go into the teller line. I gotcha, sorry. I was looking at their plan wrong. Jeff? So I have one other question. Where that exit, 30 foot road, meets the existing parking lot, do you have any signage that says do not enter so people coming around to the teller machines don't try and go the wrong way or any no left turn since that is a one way loop? I don't have anything proposed but that is yeah. I think we we um we if anything over signage in our parking lots because we you know want to avoid any right. issues with mem accidents with our members. We, yeah. We'd be absolutely open yeah. to um, but that's typically not a problem at all, that we tend to have a lot of signage, both sometimes in the striping as well as posted. So yeah. okay, definitely wouldn't be an issue for us to do to add it. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? David, no? Okay. Questions, comments? You don't have a comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any comments from the board staff? Staff, sorry. 
Okay, so thank you very much. We'll close the public hearing and you signed in, so thanks for your testimony. Um, okay, so in your packets under 3.1 is to grant ADR approval for the addition of the drive through lanes for ITM machines landscaping. Mm. We didn't talk about landscaping. Did we talk about landscaping? There's no issues with landscaping. Anybody saw any issues with landscaping? Mm. <coughs> Okay, um, to 3.1 is to grant ADR approval for the addition of drive through lanes for the ITM machines, landscaping, and site layout at 311 Sheep Davis Road. Would someone like to make a motion to grant ADR approval as outlined? So moved. Second. second. Motion's been made by Matt, and seconded by Councilor Champlin. Seconded by Teresa. Seconded so by Teresa. Want. It's actually Teresa. Give it to Teresa Here. for this time. So <laughs> Rosenberger, R O S E. No. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, 3.2 is to grant the waiver request for Section 3201 of the state of the site plan regulations to not provide a traffic study based on the fact that the ITMs are anticipated to serve existing customers already visiting the site. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to grant that waiver request as outlined? And again, with the note that we're going to check internally uh, regarding uh, traffic studies. Traffic counts. Traffic counts. I don't Sorry. Want to say studies. Not studies. That's a yeah, that, whole that, other that, that, that opens up a can of worms. Yeah, orders. exactly. So, would someone like to make a motion to grant that waiver request for 3.2? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Jeff, seconded by Matt. Uh, any discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That motion carries. 3.3 is to grant major site plan approval for the addition of drive through lanes for ITM machines, landscaping, and site layout at 311 Sheep Davis Road. Subject to the following conditions, that's precedent conditions one through four, subsequent conditions one, two, and three. Would someone like to make a motion to grant that major site plan approval? So moved. As wait, 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 wait. We have... Oh, I'm do you sorry. want to add subject to the condition that the one way that the do not have uh, sign Yeah, we'll put some conditions that uh, that signage be uh, that was a great, excellent signage be uh, in place regarding left hand left hand turn. No left turn and do not no enter. Left turns and do not enter signs. Okay, um, so that'll be in as a subsequent condition four. Um, would someone like to make awesome. a motion to grant that major site plan a plan of app? I will, someone like to I make will a motion make to that grant motion. major <laughs> site plan as outlined. My motion is made by Councilor Champlin right, right, right. and seconded by Matt. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Glad we're not going that motion carries. <laughs> thank goodness we don't have another one to go through. Okay, you're all set. Thank you for your uh, thank you for coming. And uh, that moves us on to the last item on our agenda, which has been uh, removed for tonight until the next. So we take a motion to recognize the break a day as requested to postpone. Uh, if someone like to make a motion to, to postpone the that to the, to the November 18th? 16th. 16th, the November 16th meeting. So moved. Second. Motions are made by Council Champlin, seconded by Matt. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Uh, moves us on to any other business which may legally come before the board. Anything else tonight, Heather? Can I just uh, let you know that I have, res I am working with the consultants to get the second draft of the code. Yes. Like they're basically done with it. I'm just, we don't have this. I don't have the staff. I don't have the hours to review it. So as soon as I'm able to follow back around, like they are right on schedule with phase two. Perfect. Oh, that's good to hear. Well, I was just at a housing uh, event before I came here and was talking Perfect. about. Yeah. Yeah. I've and we're ready had, for change. Are there some certain people every time they see these house based <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. I'm not going to tell you who made it. As Teresa Rosenberger seconded that. So we <laughs> will uh, we will take a vote. Today. All those That's in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Well done.